Welcome. Today we're talking about using trigonometry to find sides of a triangle. Now, so far what we've been covering for the most part, or hopefully if you follow the program you've been covering, is the idea of the Pythagorean theorem. In the Pythagorean theorem, we're given a right triangle. We know what two sides of them are. By the way, we know it's a right triangle because it has this, or it says 90 degrees, but this little square that is terribly drawn by me here identifies it as a right triangle. If we have two sides, we just use a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Well, what happens if we're given a right triangle, and by the way, both of these methods are, uh, one of the requirements is that you have a right triangle. What if I'm given two angles and one side? I can figure out another, the missing side using uh, trigonometry under those conditions. So let's look at this triangle. In this triangle, I know what this angle is. So that's one of my two angles. It's 90 degrees. The other angle has to be given to me. In this case, they gave me one of the angles being 30 degrees. So in case you don't know, or you haven't been gone through this before, the value of all the angles inside a triangle is 180. So that would mean that I would, to figure out what this angle is, just in case you needed it, 180 I would subtract 90 because that's what a right angle is worth, and then I'd subtract that 30, and this would be worth 60. But we don't really need that today. We just need one, two angles, and we're given both of those, and then we have to know what one of the sides are. In this case, we know that this side is 5. This is the missing side that we're looking for. In order to do that, we're going to use trigonometry. When we talk about trigonometry, I know you freaked out like we're supposed to be in geometry and not trig, but we're going to use this uh, uh, three trigonometric functions. We're going to use sine, cosine, and tangent. Now, sine, cosine, and tangent, really not that complicated, but I'm going to show you the short version of them. Sine is made a little shorter, just like this. It looks like sin now. Uh, cosine is cos, and tangent, these are the abbreviations. Why you would abbreviate a four-letter word is beyond me. I think they just wanted them all to be the same length, but who am I to judge? So that's how you find them. Now, in order to use uh, these functions in our daily lives, we can either memorize this ridiculous unit circle and figure it all out. Some people do that. But for our use, we're just going to use a calculator. Now, the calculator has the we probably haven't talked about this before, has the trigonometric functions already in there. See that button right there? It says trig, it's just hard to see, right above the draw. In order to get to the trigonometric functions, all you have to do is hit second and then hit trig. That's where sine is located. Now you'll see these sine negative one things, cosine negative one things, and tangent negative one things. For today, you do not have to worry about sine negative one, cosine negative one, and tangent negative one. You're only going to use sine, cosine, and tangent. So one, three, and five. So only the odd ones. By the way, if you didn't see that you go second trig, Look at your calculator right now. What else are you doing? Stop zoning out, trying to be clever, or letting anyone else know how cute you are. No one cares. People are trying to get a diploma. So sign, trick. If you don't have your calculator, where have you been for the last two years of your life? So that's what you're looking for today. We're not going to worry about sign negative one. That's for another day. Now, uh, there's a lot of mnemonic devices that people use to remember whether to use sine, cosine, or tangent to find a side. There's... Um, Sokotoa, and then there's, um, you know, please, oh, the old aardvark sat on Henry's coat and hat. I hate all that stuff. It's fine for some people. I've never been interested in it at all. So we came up with our own way to do it last year, and it's called Tan on the Hand. It's a little song, and I actually will, when I get back, will play it for you because I had my wife's fourth grade class uh, sing it last year so I could record it. That way, anytime we go over this type of problem, you'll have to hear it. That way, you'll finally, hopefully, memorize it, and it's pretty simple to remember. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do when I come upon this, and I have a situation where I have no two angles, I'm given one of them, I know I'm going to use trig. There's not enough sides for me to use Pythagorean theorem. I have to use trig. The very first thing I do before I do anything else is find the side that is not marked. In this case, it's right here. I'm going to circle that angle. The reason I'm going to do that is because I want to flip that angle and make sure it is on top. So if I had this, or whatever, 
and maybe I have 5 and X or whatever it happens to be, I'm going to pick this side and then I'm going to sort of pick the paper up and make sure this is on top. It should look like a little Christmas hat now. It's a great way to orient your paper, but we're working on this one and not that one. We'll worry about that later. Now, from here, it took me a while to come up with the method because people just couldn't get so Katoa, they couldn't get the other stuff. So I had to think, well, what's a way we can do songs and use our hands and everything else? Well, my son really likes to pew. And for him, pew is like, that's what he says instead of bang, bang as a gun. He's not allowed to say bang, bang at his school, or he wasn't at his old school. I don't know about his new school. But he says pew, so he does, I'm pewing you. So I watched him do this as I was trying to come up with a method, and I thought, that's kind of brilliant. So here's what you need to do. First thing is set this up so you have your little Santa hat or elf hat or whatever you want it to be. Make sure that little uh, ball top is on the top. Then you want to set it up so it goes pew pew. Make sure your thumb is pointing up just like this. Now the two sides we are looking at are this one and this one. We don't know anything about this side, but we know this side's length and we're looking for this one. So we're going to use a little, a little song and it goes tan on the hand, to and fro, psi goes high, co goes low. Now what in God's name does that mean? It's very simple. Tan on the hand. Once you set it up, if both the numbers that you are given or the number that you're looking for and the number that you are given are on your hand, so the thumb and the forefinger side, then it's a tangent question. In this case, it's not a tangent question. We have one on the thumb, pop, pop. We don't have one on the finger. So this is not a tangent question. The to and fro uh, set helps you set up how the... Um, equation is set up when you have a tangent. Since we do not have a tangent, we're not going to worry about to and fro right now. Now, psi goes high. What psi goes high mean means is that you have the number on your thumb and not this one, so it's not tangent. You've eliminated tangent, and you have the one on your thumb because your thumb is the high, higher of the two digits that you have out there. If you do, then this is a sign question. Well, this is a perfect sign question then because I have psi goes high. Nothing down here yet and over here. So in order to set it up, I have sine of 30 degrees, sorry, is equal to 5 because it's the high over x. Now this always works this way. And that's terrible handwriting, so I'm going to rewrite this down here. The x always goes on the bottom. What do you have to do to solve this question? Now that I know it's a sign question, I'm going to put this over 1 because I'm okay to do that, and then I'm just going to use cross multiply and divide, just like I always have, or cross products. Now, cross products means I'm going to do 5 times 1 on one side, and then I'm going to do uh, sine 30 x on the other. So I'm going to do 5 times 1, which is 5. In order to get rid of times sine 30, I'm going to divide by sine 30. And how do I put that in the calculator? Very simply. So I do 5 times 1, so it gives me 5. And then I divide by, remember to go into the second trig, Here's the sign, 30 degrees, calculator should already be in degrees form, bam, it gives me 10. So my x side is 10, so the value of this is 10. And that's true, by the way, so things worked out perfectly for me. Now, what about co goes low? Well, I do tan on the hand, so I circle this and set it up. I go to and fro, which is meaningless because I don't have a tangent question. Psi goes high. Well, in this case, it was psi. It was sine, right? Sine's right here. Co goes low means I had been given this side down here. And I would set it up the exact same way. Seems confusing, I know. But if you can remember, tan on the hand, to and fro, psi goes high, co goes low. It's very easy. Say it to yourself over and over again. And by the way, many of you will be completely resistant to this because you actually are under the delusion that you are cool. I assure you, you are not. 
By the way, cool people don't know anything anyway. They just think they're cool. The coolest people right now are nerds. You like your iPod? It wasn't made by someone who was cool. It was made by someone who was a nerd until they made the iPod. Uh, you like your cell phone that has like a touch screen on it? You like to text? All that stuff was made by nerds. This is the time of the geek, people. The geeks have taken over. You might as well just submit to them. And it looks the way things are going is that the geeks will rule for a very, very, very long time. No longer are the you know hip-hop artists from the street, the muses that we find all our stuff in, they are behind the curve. A rapper comes out with a new album, a singer comes out with a new album, and all they're doing is talking about something something that some geek put together and is now making millions of dollars with before he moves on to something else that's cool. So geeks are in charge right now, so get over yourself and geek out a little bit and do the tan on the hand thing. You may think it's childish, it's not. Because eventually you'll be saying it back to me and I will hear your cadence and laugh at you. So get over yourself if you want to get a diploma. Being cool is meaningless if you're a high school dropout because you can't be cool and be a high school dropout. So I've got this situation. So what I need to deal with here is finding that angle that's not marked. Here it is. I don't have to do anything special with the paper. So I'm going to do tan on the hand. So here's my hand. It's ready to pew pew. I'm going to set that thumb towards that empty side. So I'm going to see tan on the hand. Well, there it is. Tan on the hand because I have three, which is next to my thumb and X, which is next to my finger. So this is a tangent question. So I'm going to put tangent and the tangent goes with the angle. So tangent 30 degrees equals, now we get to the tan on the hand to and fro. Now if you think about the word to, it's got a T to start it out. That's why the t sound actually occurs. Well, so does thumb, even though it starts with the th sound, it still starts with a T. So two means that the number that's with your thumb goes on top of the fraction. So tan on the hand, two, and fro. So two, your thumb. Fro is starts with the same letter as finger. Well, your finger here is on the bottom. So of your fraction, whatever's on your finger goes on the bottom. So say these were flipped over and x was up here and three was down here. You would put x over 3. Whatever's with your thumb, if it's a tangent question, goes on top. Whatever's with your finger goes on the bottom. Hence the tan on the hand to and fro. You don't even have to finish. You're, you're ready to work this problem. So from the next step, so we made hat. Then we tan on hand. And then we're going to just set up cross products which is to say cross, multiply, and divide. The thing I hate about cross, multiply, and divide is you guys will just jam anything into the calculator and hope for the best. Cross products means you write something down. So I'm going to put this over 1. Then I'm just going to do cross products. 3 times 1 is 3. And this is tangent 30 over x. Now from here, I've got to get rid of that tangent 30 by dividing. So x is equal to 3 divided by, and go in and hit the old tangent button here. Remember, just use the regular one for today. Tangent 30, boom, 5.196. And you can round that to 5.2 if you so desire. Pretty simple. That's the answer, 5.2. Let's look at another one. So I have two sides. I don't know what this one is, but it's marked. So I have two sides marked and one angle that I know, or two angles, should I say, and I already know what one of these values is. And I'm looking for that missing side, so this is totally a trigonometric question. So I'm going to circle that empty angle and make a hat. Perfect. I'm going to get out my little pew-pew here and do tan on the hand. Well, I know that this one is marked, but this one is not, so it's not tangent. To and fro becomes meaningless. Tan on the hand, to and fro. Psi goes high. Oh, right here. So this is a, since I have psi goes high, this is a sine question. If it was co goes low, I would be given this side length. I'm not. So I know it's sine. So I'm going to write out sine. 
and the angle, 42 degrees, equals, if you have a sine or a cosine, whatever is on your thumb goes on top of the equation, and the number on the hypotenuse goes on the bottom, or not the equation, of the fraction, I'm sorry. So x goes on top, and then that's 8. And then all I have to do is cross products, real simple. Uh, so I do 1 times x, which is just x, and then I'll do sine 42 degrees times 8. Oops. Sine 42 degrees times 8. 5.35. So let's do 5.4. That's all you have to do. It's very simple. I think we have one more. Then I'm going to put you to, get to work on a few sample problems, give you a chance to do them. This says 67. My handwriting is crap. I'm not going to lie. So the first thing I'm going to do here is make my Santa hat. Uh-oh, this Santa hat is wrong. Now it's perfect. Now remember, when you do your pew-pew time, when you shoot the gun there, make sure that your thumb is pointing towards the um, marked angle up here that we've already marked. Now you can't do that with your right hand because it doesn't, it doesn't work. So what you're going to have to do, and by the way, the angle has to go around the right angle, of course. You don't put your finger ever on the hypotenuse. So you have to use your left hand here, just like this. Now I'm going to think, tan on the hand? Nope. See, this side is not given to me, and it's not a missing side. So I'm not looking for this. So it's not tangent. To and fro becomes meaningless. Psi goes high. This is my thumb, so this is the high side. This side is not given, so this is not sine. Co goes low. There's the missing side. Or it could have been the five. Either way, either one would have been right. Either way, this is a co goes low question. So this is a cosine question. And now remember that 67 is the angle measure. I'm going to set that equal to, since the number on my finger goes on the top of the fraction, x over 5. All right, cross products. 1 times x gives me x. Cosine of 67 degrees times 5. So I'm going to type in second trig, go to cosine, 67 degrees, and close that out. That's times 5. And my answer is 1.95, or I can even round this 9 up to a 2.0, but they'll probably keep it like something like that. So both these answers are okay depending on where they tell you to round, but that's all you have to do. Remember, create your hat, so find the empty side and circle it, and then you may even want to fill it in. I make mine into like a weird little pom-pom thing. I think I've seen that movie Elf too many times. Then I'm going to do, I'm going to set up my little pew pew and do tan on the hand. Remember, tan on the hand, to and fro, psi goes high, co goes low. When you hear the fourth graders do it, it's even more fun. Uh, and then from there, I'm going to use that information to set up my equation. If it's a sine or cosine question, whatever number is on your finger, uh, whichever finger it happens to be, the thumb or the finger, whatever digit it's on, goes on top. The length of the hypotenuse, whether it's known or unknown, goes on the bottom. Your angle goes over 1, by the way. And uh, if you have tangent, whatever's on your thumb goes on top of this fraction, and whatever is on your finger goes on the bottom. It doesn't matter where the x happens to be located. So then you just cross multiply. So cosine here is cosine 67 degrees times 5 and 1 times x. But make sure you sh write down this step because it will tell you whether or not you have to divide or multiply. Because what will happen is you'll get in a habit of just multiplying the two numbers together, and that's wrong at least 50% of the time. It's just the way that it is, so take the time to do it. Here are some practice problems. I know this is really hard, so get out your your little, you know, pew pew. I think everyone has a thumb and a forefinger. I've seen them. Um, so set those up. Here are three problems for you to work on. I'm going to try to make sure. In this one, uh, the angle is 30 degrees. All these are in degrees, even though you can't tell. Um, here's x and here's 5. For 2... Here's 30 degrees, and here's 5, and here's x. And number 3, x and 5 are located here. So I'm going to 
leave this set up like this so you can solve them. Even though they look like they should all be the same answer, none of them will actually be the same answer. They all have the same components. I'm trying to get you to understand that it matters whether you pick sine, cosine, or tangent. So use the method. Uh, I'll give you a few minutes to sit there and try to work it. If you are in charge of the video now, please pause the video. That way they can see them. And I'm going to stand here quietly as I can, anyway, for a few minutes, or not minutes, but for a few seconds, to give you a chance to pause the video. And then when you unpause it, hopefully you won't have to wait forever for me to start yapping again. Okay, you guys have no idea how hard it is to sit there and wait. It's like 15 seconds, and I just want to be done with this. Anyway, let's look at number one. The first thing I'm going to do is make my hat. Here's the side that's not marked. By the way, the reason I know this is a trigonometric question is because I'm given two angles, one, two, and one side, and I'm trying to find that missing side. So there's my angle. I'm going to set up my little pew-pew, aim that thumb towards the um, little pom-pom thing there. Tan on the hand. Well, perfect. This is tan on the hand, because here's x on my thumb, and here's 5 on my finger. So this is a tan on the hand question. And if you forgot, this angle should be around the 90 degree angle. Don't do it around other angles, that would be weird. So this is a tangent question. So I'm going to write down tangent 30 degrees equals to and fro, so thumb and forefinger. So that means the thumb would be the x, it goes on top, forefinger is 5. Oh, by the way, if you don't have this thing figured out in the next couple days, you're doomed because this is about the easiest thing on the planet. You will fail geometry, so stop whining about it and just suck it up and do it. Okay, so I've got cross products here. I have 1 times x, which works great. Tangent 30 degrees times 5. So I'm going to do tangent 30 degrees times 5. Make sure you close this, by the way, or you're, it'll totally mess you up and hit enter. That gives me 2.88, so x is equal to 2.9. So that's the first one. Second one, I find my empty angle, do that. That worked out perfectly for me. Tan on the hand, tan on the hand. So it's not tangent because I don't have this one. To and fro becomes meaningless because it's not tangent. Psi goes high, all right? Here's my higher of the two digits, which is my thumb, and I've got 5 next to it. So that means this is a sine question. So sine 30 degrees. Now, remember, the thing on your finger goes on top of the equation. So 5 over x. So I do 1 there. So I'm setting up as a cross products question. 5 times 1 is 5 equals sine of 30 degrees times x. Just solve it as a normal equation now to get rid of sine 30. I'm going to divide by sine 30. So x is equal to 5 divided by, I'm going to go into the trig menu and hit sine 30. I'm going to close that out, hit enter, 10. x equals 10. I think we did that problem earlier, so hopefully you at least got that one right. And finally, number three, here's my empty side. Sometimes your empty side will be over here, so you have to actually turn your paper. Imagine that. It's not all preordained for you. You have to move things around, which should help you. Uh, if you get over that school is supposed to be a certain way or whatever, it should be good for you. Uh, so I'm going to I have my little pew-pew, like my son. Tan on the hand. Nothing given here, so it's not tangent. Uh, to and fro becomes meaningless because it's not tangent. Psi goes high. Nope, nothing on this thumb. Co goes low. The the 5 is on the finger, so this is a co goes low question. So cosine of 30 degrees is equal to, and remember, whatever's on your finger goes on top, so 5 over x. Put that over 1, then just cross multiply. 5 cosine 30 degrees x. I'm going to get rid of that times cosine 30x. And by the way, you're not just getting rid of 30, you're getting rid of cosine 30. And to show you something, 
this is the value of cosine 30. It's a heck of a lot different than getting rid of 30 degrees. So don't type in 30. You have to do cosine 30. So 5 divided by cosine 30, 5.77 or 5.8. That's how you solve these. It's really, really easy. Just try to get in your head. Tan on the hand, to and fro. Psi goes high, co goes low. It's a very easy process. You should be able to use it. Get over yourself if you think you're just too cool to learn something so silly. Nobody's going to know about it except other people in this class, and they're either using it or they're failing. That's just the way it's always been. The people who got on board with this in geometry last semester did well with it. The people who didn't struggled all year. Uh, if you are interested in Sokotoa or one of the other things that other people use, I will show you how to use it. I just think they're totally meaningless because this is so much easier, and you get to spin the paper and sing a little song, and I'll let you hit a fourth grader sing it. So it's a pretty decent method, and it works a lot of the time. Now, it may look a little silly, but some of you look a little silly all the time. I mean, check out your behavior. Maybe you're looking like how you dress. Whatever it is, it is. All of you want attention, this is the perfect way to get it. No one's going to care what you're doing. They're smiling and failing. We all hate that. So good luck, pirates. I think you can do this really well, and uh, I'll be back soon.